So our next speaker is Dietmar Heinz uh, from Infinia. I would like to give you some examples of our, our top challenges. We are facing verification right now, so we are back to the high-level PowerPoint now. Yeah, so probably most of you know that our company has seen significant changes over the past years. We have carved out our communication business via line wireless to their own companies, and uh, our, main, our main business areas are now automotive, industrial power, and chip card and so on. So for, for verification, Again, for verification, this means we have still significant digital complexities in the area of automotive and chip card. And um, on the other side, we have upcoming challenges from uh, security, from power, low power, and from uh, safety and uh, analog area. So look a bit in, looking a bit in more detail in the chip card area, uh, our main main products range from simple contactless memories, RFID tags, up to high-end security controllers. So for those of you who have already the new German ID, ID card, uh, that's a, that has a 50% probability to have one of our high-end security controllers inside. Yeah. So, as I mentioned, there's a lot of analog functionality, especially in our small products. So, for verification, the, with that, there comes the first, the first challenge, analog digital interfaces. So, to verify all this analog functionality in system context, you have to balance carefully between accuracy and performance. So, for example, the most accurate methodology is mixed signal verification, this is price model. Then uh, you can use AMS models to get more performance. Then, of course, we have the digital simulation with behavioral models. And uh, on top, FPGA to go more in the, in the software and firmware range. We need synthesizable models of, this, of all this analog stuff. And now uh, you have a lot of models. And the challenge comes with the consistency of all that. Uh, um, it doesn't help if the if the software guy at the end, which who is using the FPGA, sees a completely different uh, uh, implementation than it is on the on the real analog side, and uh, it's very difficult to manage all these levels of abstraction and the right granularity. I mean, where does it come from? There's a lot of digital regulation mechanisms inside which require more and more, more interface signals. Uh, there's power measures, uh, which is more and more used, and uh, all this leads to increased complexity of analog and digital interfaces. So uh, the first measure to ensure more model consistency is then uh, to put always the higher level model into the lower level test bench, and uh, this is uh, something which is quite uh, manually done. Uh, Awareness of analog designers for digital needs is a topic here. Uh, it's quite high effort and it's not so much you can automate here. Assertions are a good methodology, but also here with assertions we have the topic of awareness and uh, bringing the both worlds together. Uh, it's, it's not so easy as, as uh, might see to convince analog designers that they really have to do assertions and that, that this is very important. So we have uh, a famous example in our in our last products two years ago, where we had uh, a redesign due to a simple missing two-line assertion. Uh, well, now it's even a one-liner, but the analog designer was completely not aware about about uh, this topic that that he could have used that. Uh, and that's not, not a real exception, that's, that's really, awareness this is always bringing the worlds together uh, is this, uh, very difficult to challenge here. Yeah, and of course, mixed signal verification is one, one uh, aspect of this, of this area. Yeah, number two uh, was mentioned already, the ever-growing complexity. Uh, gate count is uh, one of the topics not so much inter of interest for us because we are not doing the very mighty million, high end million gate designs. Uh, so on this area, uh, we feel we can handle the, the complexity, the standard IP interfaces, divide and conquer approaches, all this stuff. 
it's still a challenge, but uh, the bigger the bigger uh, challenge comes uh, more from from the tool side and from the environment side. Uh, we are going more more to mixed environments. Spacman is heavily used in functional verification. There are more and more system barrier test benches. Then there is legacy VHDL test benches. System Z bringing all stuff together requires a lot of, of reuse uh, methodologies in between, and this leads to a, a, a high complexity in environments and also in the in the tools to manage uh, the different the different uh, languages and environments. Also another aspect is power, it was mentioned by Francois, yeah, low power techniques uh, increase our flow, flow uh, complexity again. Uh, UPF uh, is, is uh, mandatory more or less to be used, but uh, not much pure enough used in the tool flows. And also here we need uh, workarounds. And uh, yeah. all this, this leads into another aspect that migration effort is, is uh, always increasing for you if you want to use new tools, new versions. I just uh, sent this away in, the, in our verification team. So um, asked uh, how many working time did you spend for, for tool bugs, debugging and identifying tool bugs, only tool bugs, not, not all the other stuff in the environments uh, which is on top. And uh, from all the team members, I got at least a number of five percent, which was which was spent for that, which is quite high. And then this this in turn leads uh, sometimes to the paradox situation that we ask the vendors for new functionality, for new tools. Then the vendors are back. I have now what you want, and uh, the reaction from the team is like this: oh, Please, not now. Yeah, challenge number three, uh, coming up the last, uh, the, probably the most, uh, the biggest thing coming up new the last, the last years, security and safety. So security is of course one thing which is quite specific to our business unit. Uh, we have a lot of security threats coming from the, from the field. Uh, there's probing, for example, for a security controller. Pre People try to attack the chip, putting needles on, on uh, signals to get out secret keys. Things like that. Manipulation, uh, you can try to crack the chip with, uh, with uh, power glitches, with laser attacks, things like that, trying to get, get also the, the chip out of its regular behavior. Or side channel attacks, measuring power and uh, try to get out secret key information out of the power consumption of the chip is a famous example for side, side channel attacks. A similar example uh, is uh, safety critical stuff. So that's the famous example uh, we have already seen from the exploding airbag, which shouldn't explode at the wrong time. And uh, also this is dealing with, uh, with faulty behavior of the, of the design. So for verification, this means a new dimension of challenge because uh, the one thing is the exploding state space. Uh, if everyone who has tried already to do full coverage on, on state machines uh, and cross coverage of this knows that it's already this is impossible. And now you have to take into consideration also the, all the illegal states which can never happen in normal operation. So flip-flops having the wrong value which can never occur in normal, normal operation. And the second challenge, of course, for verification is that uh, no hacker will give you a spec what he plans to do with your chip. And uh, it's uh, up to, to us to, to have the right measures in place. So uh, I would like to give you one example about uh, this topic. Uh, the Infineon Integrity Guard is our, our new technology for security. Uh, for, secure, for the high-end security controllers, it's a more or less a bundle of measures uh, to try to put countermeasures inside on this digital functionality. So in former times, in many cases, analog sensors were used, and uh, the new approach here is to use digital functionality to detect and prevent such attacks. Uh, one example is the, the dual CPU approach. So you have two CPUs, and uh, these two CPUs uh, basically the same operation and uh, a comparison logic detects when the, the CPUs go, go uh, do different things and one of these is attacked. So critical errors uh, are recognized by this detection logic 
and non-critical errors are ignored, so we don't get false alarms. So, uh, by the way, there is uh, also, uh, last few weeks ago, uh, I, I got the information that we were nominated for the so-called Zukunftspress des Bundespräsidenten, which is uh, awarded next week in Berlin. So, we are one of the four nominees with the Infineon Guard, so everyone who is interested to get more about this can watch TV next, next week Wednesday after the Heute Journal. This is broadcasted in, in TV. So, no idea whether we will win. There are four candidates, and Infinium Guard, Integrity Guard is one of the four. But of course, they will not deal uh, with the with the question how all this will be verified. So, for verification of this, uh, it's always a two-step approach. And the first step, you need to model the arrow. For example, a single bit flip of a flip flop, or a mighty bit flips for uh, for several clocks cycles, things like that. And in the second step, then you can use formal or dynamic methodologies of functional verification to verify it. One good example for that I want to conclude with is a, a, a stuff for this dual CPU approach. Um, you can use a, a normal test bench, you're putting a piece of C code inside and have a, a CPU. Um, Elaborating this test code, and uh, the modeling of the of the fault is simply done by a force for one cycle, and then uh, the test is executed. Can have basically three results. If the test is passed, it's fine. Then the attack was not critical. If the test uh, has an alarm, then it's also fine because our detection logic has done well and has recognized the attack. And if the test is failed, then uh, there has happened something, something strange which should not happen, and there we have a problem. So, of course, doing this leads to a lot of, of uh, calculation and a lot of, uh, lot of uh, compute intense uh, stuff. So, you have to loop over a lot of tests, over a lot of signals, and over a lot of points in time where the attack can happen. And uh, if you have done this, uh, you get a red list and uh, can can uh, analyze your possible critical faults. Uh, clearly, uh, there's a lot of now smarter things uh, because you would doing that quite naively. You would never come to an end. So FPGA acceleration is one of the things, and also some some other stuff to, to make it more smart. You, with that, I would like to conclude. Thanks for your attention. There's just one again online, uh, which is a question about specifications. We always talk about specifications being earlier and being ready. Yeah. Do you see any solutions to this? We are struggling here also on this on this area. Of course, we also request specifications earlier and uh, specifications being detailed and. Uh, yeah, I think you have two two topics in this area. The one is uh, kind of high level specifications, which uh, you can get, and the second thing is to get it more detailed and broken down. And here uh, also what what Wolfgang mentioned in his presentation, the requirement uh, engineering stuff, it's also an area of problems we are currently working, but no solution. And uh, another thing, another thing that was mentioned um, in. In the UK, I think, was the language that we write specifications in. I know John, John Marie suggested French, but I'm not sure that's the solution. But um, um, for example, system C might be uh, or executable specifications or formal specifications. Do you see that as a solution, or do you see a standard natural language for the foreseeable future? Uh, partly, definitely, yes. So for for uh, aspects of our of our stuff, uh, formal language would be definitely preferable, but not for all. I mean, we we have it for some algorithmic stuff. Uh, there are partial attempts to do it already. Let's say that way, mm -hmm. and uh, this is something you should strengthen. But uh, I I don't believe that it's uh, doable for uh, and that makes sense for everything. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.